we're in a huge WSL title race, right? It's getting pretty tough at the top. We're not in it. You're not in it anymore. <laughs> no. Ouch. You decided Ouch. to jump out of it. You bailed. <laughs> I know, which means I can be not as biased, which is kind of fun. Yeah, right. But I'll still be biased. <laughs> um, it's Arsenal versus Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. It's a huge game, you know, six pointer for Chelsea. Can we say that? Every game is a big game. Is that true or not? You know, is this is this more hyped up? Does things change in the week leading up to it? What's it been like as players? Because that's the kind of classic line everyone says, right? Every game's a big game, but how much truth is there in that? What do we think, Rach? Every game's a big game, but this is a big game. No, I, yeah. I think there's the, the <laughs> rivalries. They're, they're the huge games. They're massive games. So every game means something, but these are the games. I don't know. You want... This sounds really bad, but you, you want your big players, players that can create moments to turn up in, in games like this to win you the game. So... um I suppose it, it, it will determine and, and show the character of, of your players. You've got mm. to stand up and be counted in a in a game like this where both teams both teams need the win. So here's one for you guys, right? I was looking at the, the two squads between <clears throat> Chelsea and Arsenal, right, ahead of Friday night. Mm-hmm. And every player in those teams who would start and be on the bench are big players. So, like, this game on Friday, like, is fascinating, in my opinion, because I was looking at Arsenal's bench and I was like, from their last game, they played midweek last week against Villa in the Conti Cup. And I looked at their bench and they had Kim Scary. Little, Pullover. Scary. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember, but those two who are nailed on, you know, yeah. normally play. And you're thinking, like, they've got them on the bench. You've got Russo and Blackstenius got Kyra Cooney Cross in the mix now and you're like wow and then you look at Chelsea's bench they played Everton in the FA Cup this weekend just gone so if you're Jonas either Val if you're Emma Hayes you're obviously picking 11 that you think will win that game but there's also the banker on the bench which is what fascinates me about about, about this match on Friday night. I, rem- I remember there being one game um, a few months ago where you had Viv Miedema on the bench, Beth Mead on the bench, Leah Williamson um because they were all coming back from AC and I was like just exactly what you're saying is it was frightening I kind of thought oh, there's, there's, there's no chance I'm getting on here no, <laughs> <laughs> no and drawing the last minute you're going up front that was the penny drop I was like right <laughs> I might need Better a move here <laughs> yeah this is Chelsea's bench from the quarter final against Everton last weekend Buchanan Hannah Hampton Neve Charles Lauren James Melanie, Mel- Melanie, Melanie Lloyd Poles, Guru Wright, and Ashley Lawrence, Katrina Macario, and Hamano. That was their bench. It's insane. Bench. We we do speak about these games on how tactical they are. Like it's like a game of chess, and I feel like when it comes to selection, yeah. it's not. It doesn't come to having your best eleven on the pitch. It's tactically what you want to do and how you want to play the game a little bit different. That's what's exactly. so interesting about these 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 big games. It's what's fun about finishes, this? Isn't it? Yeah, you know when people talk 100%. about the starters and the finishes, yeah. that's that's what you got to look at. I always find it the head to heads because the and you look at there's there's been one already and Chelsea got absolutely battered at the Emirates, mm. so that's going to be like how much more motivation do you need than losing four one? Fighting talk. Well, they did, they did, <laughs> like, but it's true it, that their camp this week is like right, they're coming to Stamford Bridge, like that's a hype. That, that so every game is a big game, but do you prep a little bit different for this one? I'm not even sure. But you, you've got, you surely got to look at the mentality, the side of it. Do you know what I mean? Like the nerves, yeah. controlling the crowd is going to be, it's a different environment to your norm. Surely yeah. that has to has to play a part on your starters and the people on the bench of of how you prepare for, for that game. Arsenal are going to this game in better shape, I think, than Chelsea. Chelsea have had a few knocks and... Arsenal didn't play at the weekend, so you could say they they will have benefited from having a rest. And mm. I know Everton put up a good fight against um, Chelsea in the FA Cup at the weekend. And Chelsea, I don't want to use the word scrape through, so I think that's quite negative, but they were really challenged and pushed to the end. And I think that a normal Chelsea team, you know, on paper would, with that squad, would dominate a team in the bottom half of the WSL um, in, in an FA Cup fixture. But... Normally the cup fixture is a bit of a leveller. This this is exactly how you, how you say it. it's going to be a game of chess. 
Um, and just interesting now from afar, Jen, where, where do you kind of see this game being won and lost? Like, if you look, if you look at the two teams, right? <laughs> what are you saying from Arsenal? Where can they, where can they win the game? Well, what's the Izzy Christensen famous quote? Games are won and lost in the midfield. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> I remember you saying that in a meeting at City and I was like, what about the box? What about the- <laughs> Firstly, why was I holding a team meeting? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... Yeah, I mean, for me, I'll always look at... These games are always shifting in momentum, right? I think the, the game at the Emirates was quite a was quite a different one. Arsenal did kind of dominate it. Um, but these games are always, yeah, the, the shift in momentum. Where is it going to be won or lost? I mean, we've spoken about it. I mean, have we been spoken about how big a, a loss Sam Kerr is going to be in those big games? She's kind of popped up whenever, you know, even if the momentum's not even with Chelsea, but... It's going to, for me, it's going to be who can make the least amount of errors because that's mm-hmm. ultimately what comes in these big games. How can, who can say consistent throughout the 90 minutes lack of errors? Because sometimes it doesn't even go to the better team. It just comes from who gets the, you know, the opportunity or who makes the mistake. That's yeah. sometimes what these games come down to. Um, I think it's too tough to call. Like you said, there's too much quality. You don't even know what the lineups are going to be. Um, so it's hard to even, you know, predict who's going to, outplay who in, in what area of the pitch but I can't wait I'm gonna I'm gonna try and watch it the evening games are always good for me time wise um, what time is so that for you and, I think it's like late morning or like mid, mid morning which is perfect I think with the Emirates you know with the sellouts and everything and you know it's incredible and I think Stamford Bridge is due for a massive turnout on um on Friday night I think that perhaps adds a little bit of a, a spice to the occasion and I'm not going to say it will alter the players because when you play at this level now, your preparation is so clean and you know what works mm. for you. Um, but I, I just, I, I can't wait for it Friday night because it will have a big say in the title race. Either way, you know, if you're Man City, you want this game to be a draw or for Chelsea to drop points. Arsenal, you know, they've got themselves, they've, they quickly jumped out and then jumped back into the title race. Um, and I remember asking Jonas and I said, are you back in it now? And he was like, we were never out of it. I was like, yeah, fair point. Yeah. Um, but they are right back in it, Arsenal. Um, so it, it's going to be fascinating. I, I can't wait for it. It's pressure though, isn't it? I think, yeah. you know, like from the start, how, how, how well the teams start. If you have a mm. good start, does that settle you down? And then, you know, if the other team, obviously everyone gets their momentum. If they come back into it, is there pressure on if there's an early goal? then, you know, if, yeah. if Arsenal have to go for it, will they actually go for it? Or will Chelsea, if it's mm-hmm. the other way around, and Chelsea, are, uh, you know, have to play catch up because, or do they think, you know, it's okay to, uh, it's, it's such a mind game. I think there's so many different yeah. ways you can kind of look at it. So and it'll be interesting. The, the two games, Jen, I don't know if you saw them, I'm guessing you did, Yanks, but the two, the Chelsea City game at um, Kings Meadow, a few weeks back in the WSL where Man City won 1-0 and then they played each other midweek last week in the Continental Cup mm-hmm. and it was 1-0 to Chelsea and both of the goals were identical <laughs> but f- for, e- for each team they were just a loose pass in the midfield a high press a win back and then a, a turnover they scored like the click of a finger yeah. from a defence <clears throat> to attack um, and you could put that down to both of those moments being mistakes but also a really good play from both Chelsea and uh, and City in, in either game. And you said it earlier, Jen, it could just be a mistake. Mm. It could be, and you don't wish that on anyone, but that's how tight it will be. No, you're right, though. A, a mistake comes, it could come from a really high press, right? And I think yeah. if, if you get your press right in these games, if you don't let the opposition get into a flow, get into a momentum, because if you're, if you're Arsenal or Chelsea, what do you want? You want the ball. You want to control the game, try and dictate the tempo, everything. But if, if the opposition's press stops that and you're not getting a flow and that's exactly what they're getting you're in trouble so whether that comes from a mistake or a really good press is kind of up for a discussion but stopping momentum in another team or stopping a flow is what you want in these big games the last thing you want in this game is to not have the ball not have possession so i feel like that's the press coming into these games is, is the biggest thing who wants to play who wants to control the game 
also um, controlling the crowd surely that's got a mm-hmm. that's got to take yeah do you know what i mean it's slightly different from whether it's at, at king's meadow or um playing yeah. at stamford bridge it's got to be an increased crowd arsenal how do you handle i know they used to play in, in front of probably double that crowd but the crowd's usually with them this crowd will yeah. be against them so yeah the atmosphere of of the day i think um, and everything that goes on before you know it changes your warm up when they you know i suppose the cameras are there and uh, you know usually mm. they let off them fireworks and whatever before all those different little <laughs> things you know, know. That, yeah that are just something different to the norm talk about budgets in the wsla are they really necessary well yeah <laughs> but that's like we, we keep saying every game's a big game but you definitely feel that the hype like of a game being bigger 